that's how it should be done students simple one if you can understand the concept so most of you will get confused actually in which way we have to add row wise or column wise that you should decide that's all once you decide you should know so if you are adding uh, this one vertical one co column we will say right if you are adding these three you are adding in row wise if you are adding these three you are adding in column that's a way to remember and the second problem is that so let us take that so fourth main second problem and directly right with lhs so it is x plus y plus 2z then z and z and here it is x y plus z plus 2x x then y y z plus x plus 2y the final what i required is two times x plus y plus z the whole cube so hint is already present on the right side if you can observe we should get something called as x plus y plus z on adding rows or columns but which way let us check suppose if i am adding these three what will i get x plus y plus 4z i am not in, not getting x plus y plus z if you are adding in these three means what row wise addition now row wise addition it's not possible to get the common correct now let me add these three i am adding columns now okay so x plus y plus 2z plus x plus y what do you get 2x plus 2y plus 2z if i take two common x plus y plus z it's possible to get now that means i should go for column wise addition that you have to decide first once you decide uh, it becomes easy for us to go and continue so let's go for c1 so c1 as c1 plus c2 plus c3 see the major difference between the third and the fourth main third main you add row wise or column wise you will get the common element but in fourth main either it's going to be row like the previous one or it's going to be column like this one okay so if i add this so two times x plus y plus z 2 times x plus y plus z again 2 times x plus y plus z the next two columns has it is this is x y plus z plus 2x right and y y z plus x plus 2y and what is common from the first column 2 times x plus y plus z the remaining 1 1 1 1 and here it is x y plus z plus 2x and x y y z plus x plus 2 y okay now this time what we have 1 1 1 1 they are the leading elements of r1 r2 r3 i should apply an operation for r2 and r3 correct right i need space so let me just take out this r2 will be written as r2 minus r1 r3 will be written as r3 minus r1 there is an advantage you have to observe that cell okay uh, i can go with the, this also or i can go with this also not an issue okay and now i already have 2 times x plus y plus z right first row no change oh, sorry first row no change so 1 x y right 1 minus 1 0 subtract these two so on subtracting these two you will get x plus y plus z y minus y will be 0 second row is done Let's go for the third row. What are the elements of the third row? So one minus one, zero. X minus x, zero. Subtract these two. X plus y plus z. See, with going with R one, this is the advantage. One side of the principal diagonal, all the elements will become zero. Then the value is the product of the principal diagonal. That's easy to remember. So two times x plus y plus z. Multiply these three. On multiplying these three. x plus y plus z the whole square so finally just x plus z two times x plus y plus z the whole cube this is how it should be done students so you notice the difference between the third and the fourth okay so successfully we finished uh, four means in this exercise and now the next one also the next Fifth main one x x square then x square one x then x x square one 
is equal to 1 minus x cube the whole square. This is what we have to prove, right? So notice 1, 1, 1. No, don't think, sir, 1, 1, 1 is present here. No, it should be present in a column or it should be present in a row in such way, not diagonally. Okay, now to start with this. So 1, x, x square, x square, 1, x, x, x square, 1. I will do something here. Just observe. Let me go for C1 as C1 plus C2 plus C3. Just see the advantage. C1, that means my first column elements will be written as first column plus second column plus third column. So, 1 plus x plus x square. 1 plus x plus x square. Again, add up these three. 1 plus x plus x square. Again, add up these three. 1 plus x plus x square. Fine. And uh, you can do the same thing. Even if I do it R1 as r1 plus r2 plus r3 that means i added uh, this way right you add up these three 1 plus x plus x square again add up these three 1 plus x plus x square again add up these three that means this column you can do it either in row wise or, or, or it's going to be in column wise okay any one thing i'm going to select let me select column wise so let me write in the second column x1 x square x square x1 so the common element will be taken outside 1 plus x plus x square. Now the remaining 1, 1, 1. So x1, x square, x square, x1. So what the procedure says, you have 1, 1, 1. It's an element of leading elements of R1, R2, R3. So R2 is written as R2 minus R1 and R3, R3 minus R2. No issues. You can go with R1 also. No issues. So, 1 plus x plus x square, 1 x x square, 1 minus 1, 0, 1 minus x, then x, x minus x square. So, 1 minus 1, 0, subtract these two, x square minus 1, subtract these two, 1 minus x. That's okay. Now, the rest is simplification to get my required answer now. Fine. Uh, now just observe here students what will happen if I take x common if I take x common now I'm going to get it as 1 minus x correct now that means from the second row 1 minus x is common correct okay now look here this actually can be written as x minus 1 multiplied by x plus 1 it's an expansion of a minus b into a plus b correct but uh, here it's 1 minus x correct now but what is my final answer? My final required answer is 1 minus x cube the whole square. So what I will do here, I am going to take out 1 minus x common from here. That means you have x minus 1. x minus 1, if I take minus common, it becomes 1 minus x. Okay, now let me arrange the remaining now. So from the second row, 1 minus x, I am going to take outside 1 plus x plus x square. Fine, okay. Now from the second row, 1 minus x is taken outside. And from the next row also, 1 minus x is taken outside. What are the remaining elements? 1, x, x square, 0. And here it's going to be 1. And here it's going to be x, 0. Remember, 1 minus x is taken outside. There's a minus sign multiplied with this. So minus of x plus 1. Correct. And the last element is going to be 1. Okay. Now, let's continue. And uh, now the last thing is to expand it. That's it. So, 1 plus x plus x square, 1 minus x multiplied by 1 minus x. I am not going to multiply, I will read 10. I will tell you the reason later. So, the last thing is to expand the determinant which is present here. Only for the first element it is enough because the expansion of these two are going to be 0. So, it is going to be 1, open the bracket, 1 multiplied by 1, 1 minus. I want to multiply these two but there is already a minus sign and one more minus sign because of the product of these two. Correct. So this will become plus x multiplied by x plus 1. That's okay. So let us simplify. 1 minus x. I'm taking this 1 minus x. Then 1 plus x plus x square. Then 1 minus x. Then 1 plus, if I just simplify this. Why I did this, uh, you have to observe. This is nothing but the expansion of. 1 cube minus x cube, a cube minus b cube formula has to be applied. And this is nothing but the expansion of 1 cube minus x cube. What's the expansion of 1 cube minus x cube? If I apply the formula of a cube minus b cube, 
a minus b multiplied by a square plus a b plus b square. I got it here. So the product of these two 1 minus x cube, the product of these two 1 minus x cube, finally 1 minus x cube the whole square. You have to learn the tricks of arranging the terms when to multiply when not to multiply that depends on the right side if i don't remember my right side when solving the problem then i cannot adjust terms according to the right hand side answer so remember that thing clear fine so five problems are over uh, we left with uh, two more that's problem number six and problem number seven so let's go for the sixth one. 1 plus a square minus b square 2ab 2b. Then 2ab 1 minus a square plus b square then minus 2a. Then minus 2b 2a 1 minus a square minus b square. Fine. So the final answer should be 1 plus a square plus b square the whole cube. This is what's required for us. Okay. A bit different one. 1, 1, 1. It's not present. And you cannot make it 1, 1, 1 also. I cannot, I just add up the rows or columns. You cannot make a common element. Correct? No. So a bit different thing has to be followed for this one. So in the LHS, so I'm going to apply an operation for C1. C1 as C1 minus B multiplied by C3 and C2 as C2 multiplied by let me try this for C1 and C2. Let me see what happens with this. Okay. So, my first column, no change. 1 plus A square minus B square 2AB 2B. No change in this. Look at the elements of C1. Oh, sorry. I applied for C1 and C2, right? Sorry. C3 will be written. So, my first element of C1 is what? 1 plus A square minus B square. C1. Minus B multiplied by C3. There is an element of C3 here. 2a sorry uh, the element of c3 is minus 2b minus 2b let's see what happens with this if there is anything which i can just take down 1 plus a square minus b square plus 2b square minus b square plus 2b square 1 plus a square plus b square this is the reason why an operation for c1 is selected like this so my first element will be 1 plus a square plus b square Again, the next element, 2ab, that's fine, okay, 2ab minus b multiplied by 2a, what happens, it cancels, so this element will become 0, and let's see the next one, 2b minus b, see, I am trying to apply the operation which is present here for each element of c1, okay, now 2b minus b multiplied by c3, 1 minus a square minus b square, so it is 2b minus b, then minus, uh, minus it's going to be plus a square b, the last one plus b cube, correct now, plus b cube it's going to be. So 2b minus b, 2b minus b will be b plus a square b plus b cube. Take down b outside, 1 plus a square plus b square, correct now. Just look at that. Whenever I required, I will do the simplification on the right side part. Okay. Then I will just substitute back in the determinant. So my last element will be B multiplied by 1 multiplied by A square. That's fine. That is for C1. Similarly, let me try for C2. What is C2 is written as? C2 plus A times C3. This is C2. So 2AB plus A multiplied by minus 2B get cancels so the value will be 0 so the first element will be 0 next we have here 1 minus a square plus b square plus a multiplied by 2a this is 2a square 2a square minus a square is a square so i'm going to get 1 plus a square plus b square so how to remember nothing just by practice that's all so as you do more number of problems of such kind you can analyze okay and now the last element minus 2a plus a times 1 minus a square minus b square. So let us multiply minus 2a plus a minus a cube minus a b square. So minus a minus a cube 
minus a b square minus a is taken common 1 plus a square plus b square so the last limit will be minus a multiplied by 1 plus a square plus b square no change in the elements of c3 will be retained as it is minus 2b 2a 1 minus a square minus b square no change in the elements of c3 okay students now observe 1 plus a square plus b square is common in the first column and that is common in the second column let's keep these two elements outside so 1 plus a square plus b square this i have taken common from c1 next 1 plus a square plus b square i have taken common from c2 the remaining 1 0 b 0 1 minus a and the last thing minus 2b 2a so what is in the last one 1 minus a square minus b square let's go for the expansion so if i multiply these two 1 plus a square plus b square the whole square the expansion for the first element 1 multiplied by the product of this 1 minus a square minus b square minus the product of this minus 2a square you already have a minus sign so this becomes plus left minus the right so 2 a square that's okay close it second element no need to expand it is already 0 so 0 multiplied by anything will be 0 let's go for the last element minus 2b 0 multiplied by minus a 0 minus if i multiply these two it's going to be minus b so let's simplify 1 plus a square plus b square the whole square multiplied by 1 minus a square minus b square plus 2 a square so minus into minus will be plus 2 b square okay now just observe here 1 let me write minus a square plus 2 a square plus a square minus b square plus 2 b square plus b square correct you already have 1 plus a square plus b square the whole square multiplied with 1 plus a square plus b square the product of this 1 plus a square so this is a, a one bit different one actually okay just remember the operations see in third main fourth main you will never face problem in first main four one two three four you will not face any problem at all okay this last one uh, last one was uh, a bit different one so just remember the operation directly let's move on to the seventh main a square plus one a b a c a b b square plus one b c c a c b c square plus one this should be proved as one plus a square plus b square plus c square so let's see how to prove this so to proceed if i add these three I cannot get common element if i add these three also i cannot get a common element that means row wise addition column wise addition will not give me one 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 that's ruled out then just think now what if i want to take see a square plus one a is not present independently here it's sum of two terms here i can take a common but here i cannot take it directly so let us introduce the missing element i will use this concept okay multiply and divide r1 r2 r3 by a b c respectively the division will be shown outside 1 by a 1 by b 1 by c what you have to divide actually that will be shown outside okay now this is multiplied by a so a multiplied by a square plus 1 a square b a square c right actually i said row is common but actually in the next step you will see column wise common will be taken outside okay uh, there are two problems of such kind where introducing the missing element is allowed. Now, the next one second row should be multiplied by b, b square a, b into b square plus 1, b square c. The next one c square a, c square b, c into c square plus 1. Clear? Yeah? Now, don't take the row wise common now. You take column wise 1 a, a, a. Next b, 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 c, c, c. Present independently now. Take them outside. Taking common. Uh, remember students uh, you are taking common in column wise from the first column from the second column from the third column so here a square plus 1 b square and c square the next one b b square plus 1 c square a square b square c square plus 1 this get cancels not try what if i add these three 
and these three and these three. Let us check. Okay, uh, somewhere did I miss anything? It should be a square. Sorry, yeah, fine. Let me add up these three 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. Add up these three 1 plus a. So, what is the meaning of adding in this way? So, this is what vertical addition, right? So, I am adding what row wise. Okay, so my first row will be written as r1 plus r2 plus r3. So, here it is going to be 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. The same here. 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. So, no change in the next two rows. We will go to write down as it is. Okay. So, what is my second row now? b square, b square plus 1, b square. Then c square, c square, c square plus 1. What is common from the first row? The common from the first row. 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. 1, 1, 1. Here, my second row. b square, b square plus 1, b square, c square, c square. And here it should be c square plus 1. What should be done? I want to make these two elements of 0. They are the leading elements of C2 and C3. So, an operation for C2. C2 is C2 minus C1. C3 is C3 minus. I will go with C1 because there is an advantage of 1 minus 1, 0. B square minus B square also going to be 0. There is an advantage. So, 1 plus A square plus B square plus C square. 1 B square C square. 1 minus 1, 0. Subtract these two. 1. Subtract these two. 0. Now the next. 1 minus 1, 0. Subtract these two, 0. Again, subtract these two. So, on subtraction of these two, it's going to be 1. One side of the principal diagonal, all the elements are 0. So, the value of the determinant is the product of the principal diagonal. Okay. You can go and check. It is not there in the NCRT book. This property, what I am explaining. Okay. It's an additional property. If you remember, it will be helpful. That's what I said when I was explaining this property. So, it is 1 plus a square plus b square plus c square. What is the value of the whole determinant? 1. That is my required RHS. That is how it should be done students. So, you notice there were uh, 7 problems actually. Some mains were there. Okay. I have done all the 7 problems. Okay. Each and every problem has been done by me only. So, what you need to do? You need to learn this. The only way of learning. Listen to my explanation carefully. Okay. Because there are certain problems where uh, the method is going to be a bit different one. So, I will explain to you whenever it is different, I have told you. Okay. The only thing where my students will go wrong in recognizing whether a row wise operation is applied or whether a column wise operation is applied. If you are able to come out of this confusion, then there is no doubt even you can solve this one. Clear? So, it is better. I stop here because in the worked example, there are 11 problems are there. So, I want to explain each and every problem of the work example of this topic. So, I don't want to burden you by just uh, giving you uh, some more problems. And uh, so, what I say is better sit, practice and learn this. So, in the next class, I will come back and I will do the work examples. Then, we will continue. Okay. So, just take care. Thank you.